Something important to understand right off the bat is that this table right here with 10,000 different rows isn't actually stored as individual rows in PostgreSQL. It is stored in what we call blocks. Now each block is about eight kilobytes worth of data. So block one may have stuff like order one with customer 66, it was canceled, it was $213 worth. And in total, there's 120 different orders in this block because it is worth eight kilobytes worth of data. And that's the same for block two, same for block three, and it's gonna be the same for block N. Now I want you to notice something. The orders here are in order, but look at the customers, right? You got customer 1166 is order number one, customer 331 is order number two, but customer 331, if you notice, is actually in block two as well. And the reason this happens is because orders are stored in the order that they happen. So order one came first, then order two, then order three, so on, so on. But customer 331, they placed an order early on, which went into block one. But then later on, they actually placed another order, which is in block two. And they could have an order in block three, they could have an order in block 175. So customers could be scattered across multiple blocks. So if we wanna run a command like this, select all from orders where customer ID equals 331, like we just did before, then PostgreSQL doesn't just stop when it finds order 331. PostgreSQL has to go through all of these blocks to actually get the final result. And we call this a sequential scan. It has to go through every single one of these blocks in order. And you might hear this be called O of N. And it's basically saying as your data grows, the number of blocks also grow and therefore the time to sequentially scan through all of them increases as well. And this gets very expensive.